In this expanded and revised version of the Antarctica video, originally posted in 2010, I add additional background on the topic and information that I have found just recently. I cannot teach all the science behind it, but I can and do give a broad overview. I then provide links to websites that include radio and video programs put out by people who can give you all the details. This video is adding another voice to sound the alarm, but there is a lot more to learn about any and all of it for anyone interested in looking into it. As to my part, for years now I have been saying to anyone that would listen that whatever is coming, and something is coming, is coming from the south, meaning it is approaching and only visible from the southern end of our planet. I cannot explain how that comes to me. It's just there. It's just something I know. In 2006, I found Yao USA's article on the South Pole Telescope. It seemed to be part of what I was getting about coming from the south. The article begins, and I'm reading, America is now spending huge sums to deploy the massive South Pole Telescope in Antarctica. The final installation will be the size of a mini-mall and will require a massive C-130 airlift effort to transport pre-assembled modules and a large staff to the most desolate, inhospitable, and inaccessible region of the world. Why? The article concludes with, reading again, because this is where astronomers will find their ultimate Kodak moment, and this is good news. Their resulting multi-spectrum observations will translate into life-saving data. Well, personally, I think someone has to be really optimistic to think that any of the information that they get down there is going to be used to help the majority of us, but that's just my cynical little mind at work. So there's lots of information in between what I read at first and what I've read at the end. For that interesting information, please go to the full article at the link showing on the screen right now, also available in the notes posted with this video. That article was published in 2006. In the meantime, I am looking at information about asteroids, Planet X, Nibiru, comets, uh, one thing or another, and of course a lot of the writing centered around the year 2012 and what was expected to happen then. Remarks from WebBot guru Cliff High in a 2008 Coast to Coast interview were the basis of the one minute Antarctica video I put together in 2010 which itself was prompted by information compiled in the article The Star of Saturn, which is also linked in uh, the notes on the video here. And now you're going to hear that section of the interview that was in the original video I put together. We have another entity that houses all the stuff about the powers that be, based on our language sort of stuff. And the Antarctica is very, very, very important to the powers that be. Far more language now than in their little entity than was found two years ago, two years before that. And in 1998, when we first started getting into this sort of thing, it was virtually not there at all. So it's really scaled up over the, say, the last 10 years to the point where about 13% of the linguistics within the powers that be relate to things like Antarctica. These I wonder if unexplained why kind of things going on there. Is that like a place to escape to for uh, the elite? No, it doesn't appear that way. That kind of language is not associated with it, no. It's, it's more like there's something there they're interested in or, or something going it's on they're interested key. in. Yeah, it's a big key to whatever is driving them. And they are being driven. Needs must is the devil drives. The powers that be are getting really wacky, and it's because of what they know that we don't. A person might point out that the WebBot's accuracy seems to have suffered in the last couple of years, and that point would be a valid one. Yet, taking the WebBot at face value for what it is supposed to be, software bots crawling the Internet for frequency of information, the comments given in this interview are not predicting what will be, but reporting what is. One would not need that source to know this, because Yao USA reported on the rush at the South Pole Telescope two years before this interview. Citing that interview, then, is not a recommendation of following the WebBot project for divination of the future, but using it in an instance as confirmation of the existence of evidence in the data out there somewhere of what someone interested in the matter would have already known through other research. Hope that's clear as mud. That interview, um, as I said, was in the 2010 video. 
Today, I bring to you information shared by James M. McCanny in his weekly Science Hour radio program from February 23, 2012. He may have said this before, but I have not heard it. Admittedly, I have only listened to his radio programs for the past month or so, having come across him many times previously on Coast to Coast AM. In this program, Mr. McCanny was speaking about the Planet X disinformation efforts by NASA and how there are so many so-called experts who know nothing because they cannot see where they need to see to know what they claim to know. Mr. McCanny's um, credentials are sound. The information he puts forth makes all the sense in the world when a lot of the official science out there has, seems to have a lot of holes in it. When you look at what's really happening in the world and what the historical record shows it has happened in the world, and then you try to put together what they're saying it is. But, uh, but anyway, you can, I, I bring that up to speak to his credentials. There's a link to his bio from his webpage in the notes on this video. Mr. McCann gives out tons of information. He goes into great depth on everything that he covers. You have to go to his website and listen to the whole thing. But to give you an idea of what he was saying for three minutes, like I said, I could play more and more to give you more and more information but um, after I read this introduction here we'll play about three minutes and the rest is all at his website and you really need to get there and listen to it but he began saying quote the issue with Planet X objects is that they can come from any direction there does appear to be a lot of interest and there has been a lot of interest in the southern region of our solar system dating back into the 1980s End quote. Mr. McCandy then refers to a 1980s NASA document on his website uh, contracting with two researchers to look for Planet X objects in the southern hemisphere of our solar system. And for the next three minutes, you will hear Mr. McCanny himself speaking. But the point is that the search for Planet X, the official search, the NASA-funded search for Planet X goes way back into the 1980s and it has continued and of course the the misinformation uh, program crazy lady talks to aliens uh, that was supposed to terminate in 2003 May 15th that began in the mid 1990s that shows you how far ahead these people began planning these misinformation events the December 21st 2012 misinformation event uh, which is still going on, by the way, was started at least 10 years ago uh, to build and get that public perception out there. And uh, once again, uh, uh, it's my belief that we'll be lucky if we get to December 21st, 2012, along with the, all of the political maneuvering. It looks like May of this year is when things are going to pop. So uh, at any rate, uh, all of the things are in place, all of the rules, regulations, and laws to abscond with people, to grab them and take them off the street so that there is control of the public. That's, of course, what any fascist state will do. That's what any fascist government has done in the past. They want to get the technically astute people, those people that can talk, the people that can uh uh, uh, change perception in the public they want to get them off the street they want to control information and uh, so information is is uh, what you use to control people so at any rate it looks like this spring sometime with all of the issues going on in Iran as I said any natural events would be coupled with political maneuvering and so if there were a world war going on with Israel attacking Iran, all of the borders around the world would shut down. And uh, so at any rate, that's uh, what I think is going to happen this spring. Uh, also, those regions, uh, I was alluding to the fact that where would you go to see Planet X if it were coming in from the south? And the reality is, Especially if May there's a world tension and the Israel is attacking Iran, all of the flights, all of the international travel would be shut down. So getting to places where people could see 
Uh, and by the way, New Zealand is not that great a place to view from. The only real good place to view from for that southern part of the solar system is the South Pole or Antarctica, and I don't know many people that have tickets to Antarctica. So uh, a lot of, uh, I had a little email bout with a guy, a relatively intelligent guy who kept saying, well, the planet X is there and everybody sees it. Uh, how come, uh, tell me where it is? Well, the, the reality is... He then explains why not everybody would see it. You can go to his website to listen to that. I recommend the complete program, plus a couple or few before that, and every single one that comes out in future weeks. Again, this brief video is not meant to be comprehensive by any means. It is to sound an alert of sorts for anyone who wants to know and give opportunity for those who want to research further. When I say sound and alert, of course, I don't mean that there's much you can do about it as far as preparing to survive an event of the magnitude that we are facing. Um, you can have, you know, all the beans and rice in the world stored, but this is something really big. It sounds like it's going to be hard to survive. And if the events of the revelation begin to unfold, and please go to my Wormwood video to see what I mean, how it all ties in with this, uh, If when those events begin to unfold no one is going to escape a lot of people are going to be lost and a lot of others are going to wish they had been done away with um, before the light begins to shine again but that's the reason I do this because there is a correlation with the prophecy of the revelation and we know from the author of that prophecy that the only hope for mankind in those days is that which has been man's only true hope from the beginning seek God find God know God, call upon God, and cling to God. If you were living in the days of Noah, you would want to be in the ark in days like those soon coming upon the earth. You wouldn't want to be found outside, stranded as the waters rise. The ark that Noah built was a type or picture of the true ark, Christ Jesus. Only those found in Jesus will be received by God the Father in the last day and resurrected to life eternal with Him. So enter the ark of Christ Jesus today, and be saved from the death that comes from being outside the ark, left in your sins, out in the world, at the mercy of the deceiver and his minions. All of that is going to play out, whether it begins in May 2012, or sometime in 2017, or 2027, or whatever. But you can prepare today. Come to Jesus today. I know a number of people don't appreciate my little bit of evangelism at the end of these videos, but you know, you've got to go with what you believe. If I know the house is on fire, am I just going to walk out of the house and leave other people in the house stranded? No. I will say, the house is on fire! Get out! And that's what this is. I know. So I'm telling. If I know and don't tell, what kind of person am I? We have another entity that houses all the stuff about the powers that be, based on our language sort of stuff. And the Antarctica is very, very, very important to the powers that be. Far more language now than in their little entity than was found two years ago, two years before that. And in 1998, when we first started getting into this sort of thing, it was virtually not there at all. So it's really scaled up over the, say, the last 10 years to the point where about 13% of the linguistics within the powers that be relate to things like Antarctica. The I wonder un if unexplained why kind of things going on there. Is that like a place to escape to for uh, the elite? No, it doesn't appear that way. That kind of language is not associated with it, no. It's, it's more like there's something there they're interested in or, or something going it's on they're interested key. in. Yeah, it's a big key to whatever is driving them. And they are being driven. Needs must is the double drive. The powers that be are getting really wacky, and it's because of what they know that we don't.